Welcome to another video on rough cut capacity planning. In this video, we will look at the capacity bills method. Now, this method of capacity planning is more complex than the previous method that we saw, which was the overall factors method. Yet, this gives better and more specific information. Now, this method utilizes two additional pieces of information as compared to the overall factors method. So, additional info. So, first is that it utilizes the bill of material, which is bomb. And second is that it utilizes the routing information. Now, in order to understand this method of capacity bills, let's take a simple bill of material and routing for two products X and Y. So as you can see, this is the bill of material of X and this is the bill of material for Y. X is made up of one unit of A and one unit of B, whereas Y is made up of one unit of A and two units of C. Now this is the routing information and routing information basically provides you how the components are being routed through different work centers and what operation takes place and how much time each operation takes place. So let us understand the routing information given to us. Part X is made up of A and B while Y is made up of A and C. Hence, you see all these parts in the first column of the table. Now, the lot size has been given for each part, which is the most optimal quantity for processing in each batch. The work center is the machine on which the operation will take place. Setup hours is required for the initial setup of machine to start the operation on the part. It is a one-time setup. Now the next column, setup hours per unit is used to find out the hours taken by each unit of the part. So basically this is nothing but the setup hours 0 0.5 divided by 30. Now runtime per unit is the actual time taken for performing the operation on each unit of the part. So this is the time used to set up the machinery with the right tools, etc. And this is the actual operation taking place per unit. Now the total hours per unit gives us the total time required for each part. So basically this here 0. 517 is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.017. Similarly, for each of these operations, the total hours per unit has been provided to us. So as you can see, we have found out for each of the parts x, y, a, b, c, what is the time taken for performing the operation on each of the work centers. So just to give a very high level example, let's say this is your work center 100. This is your work center 200 and this is your work center 300. Now what this is saying is let's take from the bottom. So see the first operation that it goes through is on work center 200 that is this one here. So C here will pass through the work center. This is C. 
and the quantity that we are processing in each batch is 40 while the overall time taken is 0.825 per unit so 0 0.825 per unit now after this c then goes through works under 300 that is this one here and it takes a total time of 0 0.918 so this is C the second operation on C through 300 and this takes 0 0.918 hours per unit B goes through 300 50 quantity and it takes 0 0.32 hours so b also goes through 300 and it takes 0 0.32 hours per unit now a goes through 200 that is this one here so this is a quantity of 100 units goes through 200 work center and takes 0 0.72 hours per unit now y goes through work center 100 so this is y and this is lot size of 20 so this goes through work center 100 and takes 1.125 hours per unit while x also goes through 100 and takes 0.517 hours per unit so as you can see this is the pictorial representation of how the routing is happening so as you can see this method provides a good idea of the actual standard hours each product will use at the work center so basically as part of this rough cut capacity planning what we are trying to do is basically we are trying to find out how much of the capacity of each of these work centers will be required to meet a certain production schedule which is your master production schedule so we have basically taken the products we have broken down into components and we have then found out that how each of these parts are going to be produced and how much time each of these parts requires on each of these work centers so now this data is shown in terms of each part or product right so we have each of these parts or products and we have how much time they are taking on each of these work centers however we can transform it and showcase in the form of work centers so now let's convert this into this format so as we saw on work center 100 how much time is required on 200 how much is required on 300 how much is required so let's look at that part so this is the table where we have uh, put the capacity bills which is the standard hours required to produce one end product in each work center so what this means is for producing one unit of x the time required on work center 100 is 0.517 hours on 200 is 0.72 hours on 300 is 0.32 hours and the total is 1.557 similarly for product y for one unit to be produced we require 1.125 hours of work center 100 
2.37 hours of work center 200 and 1.836 hours of work center 300 which totals up to 5.331 hours. Now let us understand how these numbers came up from the routing information that we had. Now product X requires 0.517 hours per unit on work center 100 while product Y requires 1.125 hours per unit on work center Y. So this is clear on work center 100 product X requires 0.517 hours and on work center 100 product Y requires 1.125 hours. So this is clear. This is already given to us. Now for work center 200 A requires so 200 is used by this one and this one that is A and C. Now A requires 0.72 hours per unit and for product Y C is being processed on work center 200 and each Y requires 2 units of C. Right? So 2 units of C will go through this operation. So the time required will be so this is to be multiplied by 2 plus this one here. So this becomes 2 multiplied by 0 0.825 plus 0 0.72. So this becomes 1.65 plus 0 0.72 which is equal to 2.37. So this 2.37 is mentioned here. So this also we understood and product X requires 0.72 hours on 200 which is basically product A. So this is also clear. Now for work center 300 basically X is made up of A and B. B is not required for Y right. So B is being worked upon on 300. So that means this part is required in the manufacturing of X which is 0.32 hours. So this is clear. Now let's look at Y. So for Y again each C requires 0.918 hours. So this is the second operation on each of the C part which has to go through 300. So each C requires 0.918 hours on work center 300 and Y requires 2 units of C to produce Y. So the time required on 300 by 2 units of C will be 2 multiplied by 0 0.918 and this is equal to 1.836 hours. So this is the calculation. So this is also clear. So basically this is the capacity required for each unit of X and Y and we also have the information of how much capacity of each work center will be required for producing each unit of X and Y. Now let us look at what is the master production schedule. So this is for each unit of X and Y. Now let's see how much of X and how much of Y is required to be produced. Now let's look at the master production schedule which is the demand data. So we have been given that we need to produce 10 units of X in week 1, 10 units in week 2, 15 units in week 3 and so on. 25 units of product Y in week 1, 25 in week 2, 20 in week 3 and so on. So we now know how much time each unit of X and Y requires on work centers 100, 200 and 300. 
Now, in order to find out what is the capacity requirement from 100, 200 and 300, we need to multiply the quantities in master production schedule with these times. So let us do that. So we will now build this table, which is capacity required from the work centers for week one to five. Now let's first take work center 100. So here we require 10 units of X multiplied by 0 0.517 plus 25 units of Y multiplied by 1.125. So 10 multiplied by 0 0.517 plus 25 multiplied by 1.125 for work center 200 it will be 10 multiplied by 0 0.72 plus 25 multiplied by 2.37 so 10 multiplied by 0 0.72 plus 25 multiplied by 2.37 and for work center 300 it will be 10 multiplied by 0.32 plus 25 multiplied by 1.836 so 10 multiplied by 0 0.32 plus 25 multiplied by 1.836 similarly for week 2 since the quantities are the same 10 and 25 the calculation will also remain the same week 3 it will change because x is required in 15 quantities and y is required in 22 quantities and so on so once you have filled this table, you can then calculate each of these numbers. So as you can see, I have put together the calculated numbers in this table. So what this means is for meeting the master production schedule to produce the given quantities of X and Y, we require this much capacity of work center 100, 200 and 300 from weeks 1 to week 5. So this requirement can then be reviewed by the planner and then they can see whether they have enough capacity available for these work centers to meet this master production schedule or not and accordingly they can make the decisions to either change or add or reduce capacity for these work centers or change the master production schedule. So in a sense, basically what we have done here is from the bomb and routing information that we had for products X and Y, we found out how much capacity is required from the work centers and then the capacity required from each of the work centers for producing one unit of X and Y is multiplied by the master production schedule to arrive at the final capacity required. So this is the capacity builds method to perform the rough cut capacity planning.